guys, hello and welcome to another race video. So we're at MoSport International Raceway today in Canada for another F3 Series race, starting from fifth on the grid today. I'm gonna to say a big thank you to Mozza Racing for sponsoring today's video. You can see we're running their FSR wheel on the rig right now. For more information about Mozza Racing, you can follow the link down in the description below. We're actually working on a video right now going through their entire ecosystem of products as well. So you can stay tuned for that one coming very soon. But yeah, starting from fifth on the grid today, pretty happy with my pace around here. absolutely love this track. Haven't done it uh, for a very long time. A couple of years ago, I did a few races here in the Skippy and absolutely loved it. So I've been doing a bit of practice today. Decent pace, but we've got some really fast guys in this top split today as well. So be interesting to see how we go. Hopefully we can bag ourselves a podium, but uh, yeah, we'll play it as it comes and uh, see what happens. The track temp is right. 28, the air temp is 25 Celsius. Try not to balls this up. Okay, well, be ready. Watch for the lights. Go, go, go. Not too bad, okay. Now we're going to be super, super careful on cold tyres around here. The first two laps are really sketchy. We see just understeers like hell. Car right. Play That's right. Key. Car right. Play right. <laughs> okay, let's find a good rhythm. Make All some right, places. Let's not have an accident on lap one, guys. So we're down one position, but that's okay. Man, he's all the way up from eighth. He had a good start. Far out. All right, start to get a bit more grip now. Still not 100% though. B6. Still a lot of understeer there. All right, so we've got a 0.4 second gap to the car behind. Very close at the moment. Decent exit. He got a good one too though, he's close enough to get the draft here. You can see him screaming up behind me now. Left side. Hold What's your line. gonna happen here? Clear left. Come on Will, keep pushing, we might get him back. We'll try. Now we should have full grip. The leader's just done a 111.6. The guy ahead has just posted a 111.7. Okay. That lap time was 112.6. Oh, still understeer. Okay, really need to focus now. Not the start we were hoping for, but at least we're still alive. I knew I was going to be up against it with these guys. Just outside the suck zone here. The gap behind is now 0.5. Just trying to take care of my tyres as well. The leader has just done a Because I know they do get sketchy zero. towards okay, the end. Okay, well, hold your nerve. Just keep it smooth. No mistakes. Good. 
That's better. Now we got some grip. Sergio is very close as well now, though. Far out. These guys are quick. Struggling to keep up. Car left. Hold your line. Still there. Clear left. Somehow managed to stay ahead of him. There we go, managed to take it flat that time. Okay, 1.1 second gap ahead. Can't afford wheel spin. We've got a slightly bigger gap behind this time, might be just big enough to stop him drafting me. The problem is when I'm defending, I'm compromising my uh, ability to catch up to these guys ahead. Lap time was at 111.4. Decent times. Holding it flat. Well, we've caught up to Jamie Blewett. Not by much, but it's something. Sergio is much quicker through there than I am. Slow in, fast out. Keep the inside line covered. I'm trying. P7. He's drafting me. Close. Sectors two and three are 0.4 off the pace. You're two tenths off the pace in sector one. Managed to take it flat again. Oh, we got one out. Have to have a look at the replay, see what happened. I would say just put it in the wall there. Point four behind again. He's going to be right up next to me again. Left, clear left. Man, the concentration levels are off the scale. Understeer there, that's going to put him all over me. He's 
going to get ahead of me this time, I think. Car left. Hold hit your me. line. Why'd he hit me? <laughs> Still there. Hold your line. Clear left. Why would you hit somebody on a straight piece of road like that? I have to have a look at the replay of that too. It was a zero X contact, but... Had that happened in an earlier race too, I was overtaking somebody and they just drove into the side of me. The gap behind is now 0.6. Well, that's given us a bit of a gap at least. Point six, not much, but it's something. All right, well, don't let this guy distract you. Another one had a spin. On your right. Clear right. Can we get him in between us? Yes, we can. That'll help a bit. That definitely helps. Provided he doesn't then crash me out. Oh, a bit of wheel spin again. P5. That lap was a 111.9. It's all over me. Clear left. On your right. Yeah, he's quick. Clear right. Maybe he can drag us along. Oh, don't panic. At least we'll get some slipstream off him. Sergio's very close again too though. Come on, drag me along here. Oh, he's had another slapper. Okay, well, you're halfway home. Your fuel is fine. Keep it together. Come on, the race isn't over yet. P6. Far out, what a battle. Feel the tyres starting to struggle a little bit now. Oh, he's close this time. Point two. He'll definitely be ahead of me by the end of the straight. Away. Left Far side. Out, this is intense. <laughs> I knew Still I was there. out of my depth with some of these guys. Still there. Hold your line. Clear left. Oh Clear left. Line. Oh, he's in the wall. Oh, dear. Whoa. Seven. I'm not sure what happened there. He touched the brakes or something mid-corner. He just got out of shape. He just suddenly stopped in front of me. Oh, we got damaged. The front wing's gone. Oh, man. We've been warned about track oh. limits. That was so fun up to that point, too. What a shame. But, uh, yeah, let's have a look at that replay. See what happened there. That was really unfortunate. We were having such a good battle, but... Called into the pits yeah, I think he must have got out of shape. Anyway, we'll have a look. Alright, so let's have a look at how things played out here. Now, I, I know this wasn't the best race for me. I know that that last incident was my fault. I haven't looked at the replay yet. 
but obviously anytime you run up the back of somebody, it's pretty much a given that it's your fault. But I want to unpack this today. I think that it's, you know, I think it's important to share the good races and the bad races with you guys. I think if there's something that's interesting that can be learned from the situation, then it's worth sharing that. And we have had plenty of good races here this week as well. I had a couple of fourth places and I think a third place as well, but they were kind of boring races, so I thought I'd share this one. But let's have a look at how we went backwards here. Now, it was a little sketchy on, it's very sketchy around here on cold tires. This guy here was very keen on the inside. Saw the opportunity there. You can see I was following the line of everybody else and he just sent it up the inside. Very nice move there. A little bit ambitious, but yeah, he made it stick. No issues there whatsoever. So we're not gonna follow through every single lap here. We'll just go through the key moments and uh, see exactly how things played out. So let's fast forward a little bit now. So then this was coming down the uh, Mario Andretti straight on the second lap. And you can see this guy got a beautiful slipstream on me. I covered off the inside line here. I wasn't gonna go weaving and trying to break the toe doing all those silly things. I knew he was faster than me. I didn't wanna make it silly, but I also didn't wanna lose any time either. So I just kept the inside line here, kept my normal line and all good. So now fast forwarding to lap four, and this is Sergio behind me now, who was the person that we had the incident with. Now, he did get on the private message immediately after the incident and he got pretty angry with me for taking him out of the race. Uh, he said that I didn't read the race properly and that I should have just let him pass because he was a second a lap faster than me. Now, he was behind me for four or five laps, I believe. And I mean, I like, like the approach that I had with the previous guy, I, I didn't really feel like I was, you know, intentionally blocking or anything. Like, I wasn't making it hard for him to pass. I was holding my line and driving predictably. And I thought like my pace was okay as well. We'll go into the results later on and have a look at the relative pace between the two of us. Obviously, he spent a lot of the race stuck behind me. But whether he was a second lap faster than me or not, I don't know. I feel like that's maybe a little bit embellished, but let's have a little look here. This corner in particular, I know I was a little bit slower than some of the guys, but he was really gaining through that sharp right hander. So let's have a little look there too. See if there's anything that we can learn from there. So coming up now, I think he's, he wasn't all that much faster than me that lap. Maybe he's getting the power down a little earlier. We'll have a couple of, uh, we'll have a bit of a look at some of the subsequent laps too. So lap six now, that same corner, let's have a look at him again, because he bunched right up behind me here. Yeah, so he's carrying more speed on the entry. I think he's, he's yeah, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to analyze that more, but definitely faster than me through there, no question. So there's definitely a lesson to learn there, but let's have a look. I'm not sure if this is the lap where he got really close. And we had a little bit of contact as well at one point too. I think that might've been lap eight. So he's coming up the outside now, which will become the inside. Again, I'm not defending aggressively, doing anything to block. I'm just, you know, holding my line, driving predictably. At least that was my intention anyway. Feel free to disagree. In the slipstream again. Again, not blocking, just holding my line the normal racing line there, a little bit wide there. That was a bit of a mistake on my part. I think this was the lap where he was actually the closest for the majority of the lap up until the incident. Another car died there as well. Let's have another look at this bit. So, yeah, he's just carrying way more mid-corner speed there on that apex and then I don't think he's getting that, I don't think his exit's any better than mine. It's just that mid corner speed. He's gaining probably two or three tenths just in that one corner. Have a look here again. Again, not blocking, just holding my line. So yeah, I, I mean, I, his argument was that I was holding him up to the point where it made us lose touch of the cars in front. I, I was driving at my pace. I, I wasn't a great, I wasn't defending to the point where I was, you know, slowing myself down. So yeah, I don't know if I agree with him there. I, there are plenty of opportunities where if he'd been significantly faster than me up until this point, at least, he would have overtaken me, I believe. Again, feel free to disagree. Let me know in the comments what you think. And then lap eight. So this is where he made contact with me or I made contact with him, we're gonna see in a moment, but. So, 
I covered off the inside line here, and I'm interested to see whether I moved to the left at all. It doesn't look like I did. He just kind of came to the right. Let's follow the uh, far chase to get a better view of that one. So I've slowed this down. What I'm looking at here is the distance between the white line and my right front tire and rear tire. So I'm not moving to the left at all here, and he is definitely moving to the right and made contact with me there. So, I mean, that very easily could have taken us both out of the race. It is a difficult corner to judge it because you've got a slight kink in the road, but, yeah, I, I don't know whether maybe there was some net code involved there, but I definitely held a straight line, and that could very easily... I mean, I've, I've had other races where uh, I made the same mistake as he's made there and took somebody out. So, yeah, I'm not sure what that was all about, but we both survived. And then going back to full speed, again, like, I mean, I had the inside line there. I, I didn't do anything to defend. I just held my line followed it through and uh, I mean he was sensible enough to not try and send it so he was definitely driving other than that little uh, contact there he was definitely driving cleanly and then lap nine this is where things got interesting because we had that spun car that ended up sandwiched between the two of us so let's have a look here at this point he'd actually dropped back quite a bit from me it was the biggest gap that we would had behind us for a while and you can see the slow car here on the right so he's going to slot back in between us and I'm sure that for Sergio that was quite frustrating. But you see Sergio then, again, he's kind of pinching him on the inside there. I'm not sure. But again, like he's moving across on him. Let's have a look. So he tucks him behind. Just keeping it clean. Now, I knew that this guy had come from in front and I could tell by now that he didn't have any damage. So I knew he was gonna be significantly faster than I was, which again is why I didn't uh, I didn't defend against him aggressively at all. So coming through turn three, I knew immediately that he was a lot quicker than me because of just, I mean, just look how much more speedy. I, I had a bit of a mistake there, but just carrying way more speed. So there was no point in even trying to defend against him, better just let him go. So at this point, I'm just trying to stay in the car ahead slipstream. He actually wasn't as much faster than me as I thought he was going to be at this point. You can see I've got a better exit here. And I actually had to back out a little bit through a few sections here, which allowed Sergio to sort of come back up again on us. So Sergio has got a good run here. I thought he might try and send one on the inside here, so I did take a bit more of a show. You can see he did have to get on the brakes there. And again, that's just because he's carrying so much more mid-corner speed than me. But this is where the incident happened. So we're going to go three wide at one point here, I think. Yep. Well, not quite, almost. So he's moved across to defend there. And then this is where it happened. So he's on the inside. I've backed off there to drop in behind. Gone to tuck in behind, and then there's the contact. So let's have a closer look. So let's have a look at this in slow motion. So at this point, the speed differential isn't huge. And you'll see as we start to turn in, I back out. So still pretty neck and neck. And then about here, I lift a little bit. There it is there. So you can see now I've dropped half a car length immediately, full car length now. And this is so that I can tuck in behind him and follow through the next corner without compromising my exit speed completely and letting the McLaren through. But you can see here now, all of a sudden he's slowed right down there. And I've just misjudged that, uh, that slowdown. It all happens very quickly. So my cockpit cam now, I can see him alongside me at this point. I know he's there. And you can see I back out here. And then I go to tuck him behind and then bam. So it all happens so quickly. And I mean, it absolutely is my fault. No question about that at all. It's just whether or not I deserved being accused of driving recklessly, I guess is the question. So let's have a look from Sergio's point of view now. I want to listen to hear if he's on the brakes at that point or what's actually happened. So he hasn't he hasn't hit the brakes aggressively there. I think his line is just really different from mine. And he's probably conscious of not wanting to go out too wide and you know squeeze me as well. He's leaving me room. So yeah, I mean he definitely didn't do anything wrong there at all so let's slow-mo following Sergio now so
Again, I'm coming out wide, but leaving enough room just to try and open up the corner a little bit. And I know at this point he's going to transition across and he's probably going to end up running out. Well, we had another accident with another car on this same corner where somebody did actually sweep right out and just cut me off completely. So I was conscious of that and trying to tuck back. You can see I'm already starting to close again here. Neck and neck again at this point, but then all of a sudden I'm way, way, way far. I think it's because I've already transitioned to start sweeping through the next bend and he's still kind of swinging around there. So yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I've just misjudged. I mean, it happens in a split second, but um, I've just misjudged his braking there or he's slowing down for the next corner and it's just, uh, it's ended up in me uh, running into the back of him. So yeah, absolutely 100% my fault, but yeah, I, do, I don't, I mean, what do you guys think? I, I don't think that I deserve to be called a reckless driver for that. I, I would definitely say that it was more my fault than his fault. I don't think there's any blame on him whatsoever for what happened, but um, yeah, it's definitely more a racing incident than reckless driving, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Let's have one more look from that view in full speed though. All right, so you can see I'm dropping back and then bam, it just, I mean, it's less than a second. And it's only, you know, it was only a small touch as well, but I don't know. I mean, did he have damage there? It's hard to say. Just looking again. I mean, did he just run wide? Yeah, you do see. Oh, I mean, pop. You saw the suspension move a little bit, but then it popped back. I, I don't know. I mean, there's so much stuff going on in iRacing with netcode. I, I, I certainly wouldn't go as far as to say that he just spun on his own and that the contact had nothing to do with it. I, I would have to give him the benefit of the doubt that he had damage from that contact. I mean, it was enough to damage my car, as you saw, I ended up sliding off. But yeah, look, I mean, it's it's an unfortunate, and Sergio, if you are watching, I'm sorry that that happened. But yeah, I, I don't think that I was driving recklessly. But again, you guys let me know in the comments what you guys think. But uh, let's jump in now, have a look at the results. All right, so it was top split, strength of field 2.45. Let's scroll down now right down to the bottom here. So we ended up in 15th position at the end. Uh, obviously the race was over. We had a missing front right wheel at the end of it. So we were eight laps down. Uh, Sergio looks like he did actually continue six laps down. So he must have towed to the pits and then done a couple more laps at the end. I'm glad that he was able to at least finish the race. Uh, minus 31 on his I rating and a minus 06. So he, it didn't take it. It wasn't a massive hit. You can see I got minus 36 as well. So it was about the same for both of us. I definitely deserved more of it than he did. So it's a shame that it, um, that it took him out as well. But uh, yeah, I'm glad at least that he was running at the end and he didn't have to quit out of the race completely. Uh, five incident points for both of us. I, he probably maybe got some incident points for that contact on me a little bit earlier. I'm not sure about that one. Um, but let's have a look at the relative pace as well because he did make the comment that um, I was holding him up by a second a lap. Now, obviously he was behind me, so we don't know. But my fastest lap was, where are we? A 111.356. And his fastest lap was a 111.406. So my fastest lap was actually faster than his quickest lap. But I mean, obviously we don't know. He was definitely quicker than me in that one corner though, that right hand, that kink. Um, so yeah, no question he had the pace there. But over the course of a lap, maybe not, I don't know. I'd say to say that I was holding him up a second a lap. I certainly, I mean, again, I wasn't, I wasn't defending aggressively at any point. So I feel like if he had the pace to overtake me, he uh, he would have been able to overtake me. But anyway, guys, that is the race video for F3 at uh, MoSport. Now, as I said, I did have a bunch of races that were a lot better than that in terms of the result. I was actually really happy with my pace this week. I really love this circuit. And although I haven't driven here much, I, I really enjoyed kind of learning it, getting on the pace. And like I said, my aim was always to be, you know, my aim these days is to try and be within a second of the really fast guys. And in this case... The race, the fastest lap, just going back to the results here, the fastest lap was a 110.949. So I was within a second, within half a second, in fact, of the, just within half a second of the fastest lap time. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with my pace here. It's a shame that uh, in these races, tiniest little contact takes you out of the race. Uh, you know, it is what it is though, and you do have to drive with that in mind. But definitely my fault, guys, no question about that. But I'm keen to know in the comments what you guys think about it. More a racing incident, more my fault. Uh, yeah, what lessons do you think I should be learning from it? Definitely some studying to do there for that right-hand bend to try and get a little bit more pace there as well. But overall, uh, yeah, a frustrating race, but hopefully one that we've all learned a little bit from. Don't make the same mistakes I make. And uh, yeah, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the video. So looking forward to your comments down below, even if I do get roasted. And uh, I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.